well, that, that's the ultimate bet, that we'll be able to revive ourselves um, if uh, we're able to preserve ourselves with cryotherapy. So the, the, the way it's currently done um, is fairly brutal. Uh, it's a freezing process um, that does a fair bit of damage to cells. So I think that that's, it's going to be a real challenge to bring us back. That said, I can see new developments, particularly with the use of hydrogen sulfide, which uh, we've published is, is part of the longevity pathway, uh, coincidentally, or maybe not coincidentally. Um, but yeah, I think these advances will allow us to, to be able to be revived from cold storage without even freezing, perhaps, you know, go, go under for a few decades or maybe longer. Uh, we need to figure that out if we're going to make it to another another habitable uh, solar system anyway, in my view, which uh, I write in the book will take us about 10,000 years to get to unless we have a major breakthrough in, uh, in rocket propulsion. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't think a lot about cryopreservation because it's the, the ultimate um, way to, uh, to, to be alive uh, in the future. My hope is that we don't have to get there and uh, we can, we don't have to freeze ourselves to be able to preserve what we've got. Um, just while I'm on the topic, our, our bodies are, are open systems, meaning that the entropy that occurs and the loss of epigenetic information, that should be reversible as long as there's a backup copy. We can take in energy as long as there's some energy in the universe and there's plenty of energy in the universe for the foreseeable future. Um, and so the, the idea that uh, aging is, is predisposed and we, can, we can't fight it uh, justifies biology, it de defies physics.